He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water will reach him up to his knee. You designed a picture already? <laughs> the Jal is going to step in the ocean. The Jal is going to step into the ocean and the water will reach him to his knee. Protestant Islam, of course, is going to wait for a man who is tall enough so when he steps into the water, you will see the water reaching him up to his knee in the ocean. Again, I want to suggest to you that we are dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. But you and I know that this is symbolism. It represents the technology with which Dajjal is able to go down to the bottom of the ocean. The Prophet said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about Dajjal. That he would ride on a donkey. And the donkey would travel as fast as the clouds. And the donkey would have his ears stretched out wide. The donkey will have his two ears stretched out wide. <coughs> A flying donkey with its ears stretched out wide? Now I think our artists over here tonight are going to have a field day with this symbolism. A flying donkey with his ears stretched out wide. I hope you don't get any problem with your government, eh? A flying donkey with his ears stretched out wide. The Dajjal is going to fly, come flying on that donkey. My opinion, which I hope you will share with me, he said that donkey is already here in the world. I have interpreted that donkey to be already here. Yes. When I come to Malaysia, I have to travel on that donkey. Yeah. I have to travel on that donkey every time I come to Malaysia. This is religious symbolism with which we began the lecture. The donkey is the modern aircraft. And since the Antichrist brings with him the modern aircraft, the Antichrist commands the skies. You can't, you cannot compete with him or rival him in power the skies above. And so the Dajjal controls the sky because the flying donkey is not just a passenger aircraft. The flying donkey is also the fighter aircraft. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, foretold that in the distant future a time would come when camels would be abandoned as a means of swift transport. One may ask then that what was going to replace these uh, forms of transport which were being used in the desert uh, since time immemorial. And the Prophet of Islam described the emergence of a donkey that would be like no other. One 
A donkey which must have seemed so fantastical to the people of that age, but now we can all realize and understand what was being referred to. Regarding this donkey, the Prophet of Islam said, and I quote, People would climb into its belly from the openings on its side. Its belly would be well lit from within and would be equipped with comfortable seating. The donkey would move at exceptionally fast speeds covering long distances in a matter of days or hours. It would have regular stoppages on the way and at every stoppage the public would be invited to come and be seated before it resumes its journey. And every departure would be loudly announced. Not only this, and I quote, this donkey would consume fire and this fire would burn in its belly but those seated in the donkey's belly would be fully insulated from that fire. However, the prophecy does not end there. The Prophet of Islam also said that when this donkey was required to travel by sea, it would swell to enormous sizes and move from continent to continent and would carry mountains of food on its back across the oceans. But this donkey would not only travel by land and sea, it was also mentioned 1400 years ago, and I quote, that this donkey would move in the air at an altitude higher than that of the clouds and that it would roam the sky like a cloud driven by wind and the width between its ears would be 40 meters approximately. I, will, I leave it to you to decide for yourselves what modern day development is being referred to here and should let you reflect how a man in 7th century Arabia could, who was unable to read or write could have drawn such a vivid picture of a world over a millennium away if not by revelation from an all-knowing God because he couldn't have concocted these things or thought of a grand scheme and made these ideas up, considering the fact that they're pretty descriptive. He said that the Antichrist will step into the ocean and the water will reach him up to his knee. You designed a picture already? <laughs> the John is going to step in the ocean the jar is going to step into the ocean and the water will reach him to his knee. Protestant Islam, of course, is going to wait for a man who is tall enough so when he steps into the water, you will see the water reaching him up to his knee in the ocean. Again, I want to suggest to you that we are dealing with religious symbolism here. It is not to be understood literally as a donkey. It is not to be understood literally as a man who is a few miles tall. But you and I know that this is symbolism. It represents the technology with which Dajjal is able to go down to the bottom of the ocean. The Antichrist would be jumping about between the heavens and the earth. Jumping about, said the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Again, I want to suggest to you that this is not to be interpreted literally, that we are dealing with religious symbolism. The Jal is going to jump between the Samawat and the earth, the skies and the earth, jumping up and down. You could be a very tall man to do that. If you're going to jump and your head is going to be in the sky, and then jump back down and your head, your feet on earth. I mean, you've got to be miles high as a human being to achieve that. Eh? Well, then what does it mean? The jar is going to be jumping between the heavens and the earth. Answer, this is symbolism. The Jal will have the technology with which to be able to go up and come down. It refers to our modern exploration of the heavens above. The satellites that go around the earth and the shuttle aircrafts that go up and down. The father of the space age. That's what we call him. You know what he said? I'm not the father of the space age. That's the real father of the space age. Okay, now this guy, 
who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. Okay, I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where's it all coming from? <laughs> We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anam, when and where and what, but this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. You know, but the, the technology, if you study where all this technology comes from, okay. You know, read about the magic and the enlightenment period. All these scientists were magicians. They were all into black magic. You read about uh, Francis Bacon. He, I, I just read a, a, a biography of Francis Bacon called Knowledge is Power, Magic and, and, and the Creation of Modern Science. Francis Bacon was reading all these magical books. Uh, 2001 a Space Odyssey, Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke, great technologist. He actually uh, has some, most of the patents that enabled the satellites, right? If you look at his interview with BBC in 1961, where he predicts the internet, he predicts uh, the cell phones, he predicts uh, texting. He said that by the year 2000, people are going to have handheld devices that they won't talk to anybody anywhere, right? Arthur C. Clarke said, and he has three laws of technology. One of his laws is no technology reaches a level of, of complexity except it becomes indistinguishable from magic. So, you know, the prophet predicted he predicted that people uh, he predicted that people would fly uh, in the air. He predicted that people would go out of their houses with uh, things on their thighs that would tell them what was happening back in their families. He said that people would talk to shiraku na'alihi, which in Arabic shiraku na'al is this. That's the, that is what a shiraku na'ali, which is the universal sign today for telephone. And he said a man will talk to his shiraku na'al. You know, that's how people say it, right? The Arabs call that shiraku na'al. He told us that towards the end of time, you will see the, the, the people, the ala, ri'asha yatatawanuna fil bunyan. He said there will be poor people who were the, the desert people and they were poor and they were taking care of goats and, and animals and then they'll begin to build huge buildings. These are signs before your very eyes. You, we're seeing signs of our Prophet He told us, that you will see the, the buildings of Mecca reach the mountaintops. The buildings of Mecca will reach the mountaintops. And this is happening in our lifetime. When I first went to Mecca, there were no buildings even close to the tops of the mountains of Mecca. And now it's filled with buildings that are beginning to reach the mountaintops. I was on one of the tallest mountains in Mecca, and you can see the clock tower now surpasses the mountains. The Prophet ﷺ said, in, in a hadith, he said, If you see Mecca, if you see its mountains with holes pierced through them, this is what it means. And you see the buildings reach the, or in a riwayat ta'lu, they will actually surpass the mountaintops. And then he said, فَقَدْ أَظَلَّتَ السَّعَةُ It means that the sa'a has cast its shadow. Imam Asyuti says in this, هِيَ عِبَارَةٌ عَنْ دُنُوَ sa'a. It means that the, the hour is near, it's coming close. In fact, <coughs> in all of these we see pointers towards a scientific and technological revolution which would sweep the world and the mastermind behind that scientific and technological revolution 
is the Antichrist. I want you to recognize that Britain was the leader of the world in the technology which led to all of this. I present all of this information to you to argue the case that the island in the Hadith of Tamim Dari is the island of Britain. And so my answer is that that island of Tamim Dari is Britain.